This legal brief addresses the current legal status of hemp and its derivatives, including cannabidiol. Brought to you by Alpha Tech Pet Incorporated, the makers of Vetiol Veterinary CBD from Hemp for Pets. I'm Dr. Seitz, the president of Alpha Tech Pet Incorporated. The legal issue addressed is whether minimally processed raw hemp and hemp extract, including CBD and other phytonutrients derived from hemp, are now lawful to transport, process, sell, and use as of the enactment of the 2018 Farm Bill. To answer those questions, we will examine how the 2018 Farm Bill alters and impacts positions held by the Drug Enforcement Administration and the Food and Drug Administration in relation to hemp and its derivatives, including cannabidiol. Think of the DEA as being the police force on a federal level for declaring what's illegal and what's legal regarding compounds posing risk to public health. It does this through the instrument of the Controlled Substances Act. Whereas the FDA is more like a lifeguard charged with protecting and promoting public health as it implements various processes to determine what's safe and what's not safe. And it does this through a number of instruments, only two of which are presently relevant to discussions regarding CBD derived from hemp, investigational new drugs and the Food, Drug and Cosmetic Act. So let's get started by first defining some terms. Cannabis is simply the genus name for a flowering plant with the species of interest being Cannabis sativa. Cannabis itself contains some 500 natural components, 200 of which are terpenes and sesquiterpenes, and approximately 113 or so are cannabinoids. It's important to note that marijuana and hemp are both cannabis. The difference being that marijuana has a THC content greater than three-tenths of a percent, whereas hemp has a THC content less than three-tenths of a percent, THC being the only psychoactive cannabinoid found within cannabis. The bottom line is that you do not want products containing THC greater than three-tenths of a percent for use in animals, with zero THC being the preference of choice. The 2018 Farm Bill now defines hemp as the plant Cannabis Sativa L and any part of that plant, including the seeds thereof, and all derivatives, extracts, cannabinoids, isomers, acids, salts, and salts of isomers, whether growing or not, with a delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol concentration of not more than three-tenths of a percent on a dry weight basis. The Farm Bill also contains a Controlled Substances Act exemption for hemp and any part of that plant. The term marijuana, which is still regulated by the Controlled Substances Act, no longer includes hemp in its definition, and hemp is now simply defined as cannabis having a THC content less than three-tenths of a percent. Hemp extracts, including their cannabinoids, no longer fall under the purview of the Controlled Substances Act of the DEA and are now lawful, provided they do not contain THC concentrations greater than three-tenths of a percent. Regarding interstate commerce, nothing in the Farm Bill prohibits the interstate commerce of hemp or hemp products. Raw hemp and hemp extract, including CBD and other phytonutrients derived from hemp, are now fully lawful to transport, process, sell, and use throughout the USA. Since the DEA is responsible for domestic enforcement of the Controlled Substances Act, it is clear from the 2018 Farm Bill that raw hemp and hemp extract, including CBD and other phytonutrients derived from hemp, are now legal in all 50 states and fully exempt from the Controlled Substances Act. Let's now discuss the agency responsible for protecting and promoting public health, the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA is responsible for protecting public health by ensuring the safety, efficacy, and security of human and veterinary drugs, and by ensuring the safety of our nation's food supply. Any product marketed with a claim of therapeutic benefit to diagnose, cure, mitigate, treat, or prevent disease is considered a drug and must be approved by the FDA as an investigational new drug before it can be sold. And once a product has been approved, other similar products not having gone through investigational new drug processing that utilize the exact same compound or compounds are prohibited from being marketed as a drug. In the case of GW Pharma's drug Epidiolex, 
It is important to note that Epidiolex is made from CBD isolate derived from marijuana. According to the 2018 Farm Bill, the legal status of CBD and other cannabinoids depends on whether its source is lawful hemp or illegal marijuana. This is referred to as the source rule. Investigational new drug concerns potentially created by GW Pharma's drug Epidiolex do not apply to hemp-derived CBD products for two reasons. One, the drug Epidiolex is made from CBD isolate, a single compound, which is different in kind from that of hemp extract containing CBD plus other naturally occurring compounds. And two, the drug Epidiolex is made from illegal marijuana, not legal hemp. Therefore, hemp extract containing CBD plus other naturally occurring compounds does not fall under investigational new drug jurisdiction unless the products are being marketed as a drug or are in violation of other FDA provisions. Though hemp is no longer an illegal substance under federal law, the FDA does continue to oversee cannabis products under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. And at the present time, it prohibits inclusion of CBD in foods and dietary supplements. As has already been stated, any product marketed with a claim of therapeutic benefit, regardless of source, must be approved by the FDA as an investigational new drug before it can be sold. And the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act also prohibits the inclusion of CBD, regardless of source, in foods and dietary supplements. Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act concerns do not apply to products containing CBD from minimally processed raw hemp and hemp extract, including CBD and other phytonutrients derived from hemp, so long as, one, no therapeutic claims are being made, and two, the products are not marketed as foods or dietary supplements. It is worth noting, however, that the FDA is currently considering allowance of CBD in foods and dietary supplements, along with issuance of suitable regulatory oversight once that's determined, to ensure safety of these products to the public. And as it does so, it is certain other provisions under its purview will likely come into play at that time. So to wrap things up, the 2018 Farm Bill redefines hemp by removing hemp and hemp extract, including CBD and other phytonutrients derived from hemp, from the purview of the Controlled Substances Act, making these substances now fully legal in all 50 states, so long as, one, no therapeutic claims are being made, two, the products are not marketed as foods or dietary supplements, and three, CBD is sourced from hemp and not marijuana. So what's legal? Products that make no therapeutic claims, products not marketed as foods or dietary supplements, and products sourced from hemp and not marijuana. And that's Vetiol. Now before I conclude, and at risk of upsetting the entire hemp-based CBD industry apple cart, I must point out one very critical point. Of the terpenes found within cannabis, Betamyrcine makes up 65% of its overall content, making it the most abundant terpene found in cannabis, meaning all cannabis oils contain betamyrcine. And that's a problem, because betamyrcine is listed as a California Proposition 65 carcinogen, something we believe most manufacturers are completely unaware of. We are pleased to report that Vetiol is betamyrcine free. We thank you for your participation and hope this presentation now helps you better understand the legal landscape surrounding hemp-based CBD products, making you more equipped to interact with your clients. For more information, you can click on the CBD legal link on this slide for a further detailed written opinion by our cannabis attorney and legal expert, Rod Kite.